Garth, can you talk more about the the Trinity and the distinct intellects? Yeah, God has revealed to us um, that He is one single being, a unified being. Okay, and within the unity of his being there subsists a plurality of seats of intellect or persons okay so god is both unified and diverse okay so god is one in one sense and he is three in another okay so when people say that one and three is a contradiction these are people that uh, are either ignorant of what the Trinity represents or they're just being sophists. Like when they try to pull the, 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 the law of transitivity, the transitivity of identity. Okay. Well, in the sense that there are three, what would be the difference between each of the three uh, intellects? That they're discrete from each other. Uh, in what way? The seed of intellect of the Son is not the seed of intellect of the Father. Yeah, I mean, look, I mean, give like, you an, look, look, I'm going to give you an analogy, okay? Are you on a phone right now? Uh, no, I'm using a mic, wait. Maybe what it's... what are you what are you on right now? A computer, a tablet, a phone? A computer. Okay. And is it an Intel chip? Um maybe. I'm not sure. Oh, oh, oh I know, Intel. I know I know what the problem is. Sorry. Does it sound better now? Your microphone is fine. What kind of CPU do you have? Um let me check. Either an Intel, uh, AMD, or there'll be an Apple chip, most likely. There could be other chips, but those are the. Uh, get a. Is it a is it... Intel. Okay. If you were to examine that single CPU under a microscope, its internals, you would find out that it has more than one core. Okay. Are you familiar with cores? Uh, somewhat, yeah. Okay, so the computer, the CPU is composed of many, many transistors, little tiny switches. It got to a point where it was it was very difficult for the designers when you're getting up in the billions of transistors. So what they decided to do was make a computer chip with more than one core. Okay, and they first started out with that the, the chip would have two cores, then they went to four cores, okay? So in modern chips today, they're typically multi-cored, right? Yes. So each core can function like the whole CPU. One core is discrete from another, but they are concretely unified as one central processing unit. Okay? Yeah. Now, does that prove the Trinity? No. It's just an analogy. Likewise, I could give you another, another al an analogy where we have a cube. A cube has three discrete dimensions. Okay? But it's still a unified cube and each dimension also depends upon the other two dimensions but it's still distinct from the other two dimensions right so the cube has a oneness to it and it has a threeness to it yeah so each of the seat of intellects that we refer to as persons within the godhead each of those seats of intellect share the same qualitative attributes that the other two have, such as 
They possess the attribute, attribute of being eternal, omniscient, omnipotent. Okay? And so what we have is God being the solution to the one and the many problem. So God is both the one in one sense and a many in another. He's unified and he's also diverse. Likewise, when God creates the world, we have a diversity of things, but various levels of unity that are imposed by God. So the world exemplifies unity and diversity. And because there's unity and diversity, there's coherence. Okay. Yeah, I understand. Um, the analogy with the cores, uh, I'm a little confused. Uh, I get that the uh, the cores, they add up and they could unify into one and it functions as one unit. But I think like if you take each individual core, they are different. Like they'd be composed of different atoms, matter or whatever. So I'm just wondering in terms of God, if we took one of the uh, cores, I guess, what would be different between the other cores? I'm not understanding your question. Uh, like the analogy that you gave with the cores um, and the and the CPU. All I have twelve cores in my CPU. So these cores they all function and they unify for one CPU, one unit. And you're analogizing that to God and the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you said they're distinct intellects. Uh, am I getting this right? Yeah, they're distinct seats of intellect, but they are of one mind. Yeah. In other words, they share the same uh, purposes, attitudes, beliefs. Okay. Yeah, the part that I'm confused about is you said that they're they're distinct, but I'm wondering in what in what sense, other than other than the name. They're distinct in that they are qualified as a, a, dis, a discrete seed of intellect. Yeah, but like in, in the same way we in the same way we have by analogy, we have a dimension in a cube that is discrete from the other two dimensions, but they are conjoined as a unified entity and are not separable. Yeah, well, I understand. You're not, listen, listen to me. You and I, regardless of our intellect, is not going to be able to fathom or understand exhaustively the nature of God. That's an impossibility because only God can be entirely self conscious of himself. Okay? So, what God reveals about himself and about his purposes is not anything that somebody can question because there's no reference point to call into the question from. There's no standard by which to, to question it. Okay? Okay. So the point, the point is this. Knowledge, all knowledge including the knowledge when I look at my fingernails on my left hand, all knowledge ultimately is rooted and grounded in the mind and the purposes of plan, of God. Likewise, our knowledge of him is rooted in his mind and his, his plan and revelation of himself. Okay. Now, nobody can rationally and logically question that which God has revealed, because by what standard would they do so? Yeah. So God has revealed clearly it was hinted at in the Old Testament. Okay. But fully revealed in the new. That God is a single being who subsists as three discrete seats of intellect. So God is both unified and diverse. Now, that may seem to some people to be a a, a, a uh, a contradiction. We 
as Christians do not hold that that is a contradiction. We might say that it is paradoxical, or it is better to say it is a mystery to us. Okay. The fact that what God has revealed to us is in some sense mysterious is not a problem. Why should I be troubled by what I don't understand? Okay. Can I say what you said back to you to see if I understand? I guess I'll try. Um, so basically, you said that um, there's distinct intellects between the three uh, cores or whatever, um, but you don't know the substantive differences? God has revealed that within the unity of his being, there is a threefold distinction. Each of the distinctions can be understood analogously as discrete seats of intellect. Okay? They're discrete from each other, but unified as one being. Okay. Imagine you had a CPU that had a single core. That's all it was, just a single core. And then they come along and somebody says, you, you know something? What if we make a CPU, right? And it has three cores, right? But that the three cores are inseparable as one CPU, okay? One CPU three discrete cores, each of which have the characteristics of being a CPU discreetly, but they are one CPU because they are concretely unified. Okay. So there is no rational way to ob object to it. And in fact, when you get into it philosophically and theologically, God would then not be coherent and perfect if he were a Unitarian being, or if he was a binity, a bi binity meaning two persons unified, or if there was a quadrinity. Okay. There are philosophical problems with this. A Unitarian God can't be perfect. He cannot he cannot actualize love or relationality before creation. Okay. Okay. See, people have a problem that if they can't understand something to their satisfaction, they want to reject it as illogical. That's what Adam and Eve did. They decided to reject God's self-disclosure of himself and um, they opted for their own autonomous reasoning that the mind of man would be supreme or the, the final court of appeal through reason and experience and induction. And then we had the fall of man. Okay, so those people who try to refute the doctrine of the Trinity, they're doing so under the premise of the supremacy of the mind of man. But the supremacy of the mind of man cannot be established to be real. Okay, so we accept the doctrine of the Trinity, just like we accept everything else that God has revealed, because the mind of God is supreme, and the human mind of reason and cognition is in subjugation to the supreme mind of God. If somebody says, well, I don't accept the Trinity, I, well, on what grounds? Well, I'm just trying to understand. Um, you said God revealed that there, there's sub, the, there are discrete seeds of intellect. I think that's what you said. Um, yeah, God has revealed that he... Is multi, he is a multi-personal 
single unified being. Yeah. But when I ask you how these are different, they're different in that they are discrete from which each other. Besides that. There is no besides that. Well, this how is how, how okay, hold on a second. How is your seat of intellect different than mine? My seat of intellect is not you. Uh yeah, that's true. Now Darth. What if it was what if it what if it was the case that um, in a world where God is, could God place two discrete intellects within one body? Of course he could. And you would have two discrete intellects residing in one human. But God didn't decide to create humans that way. Okay. This is why God said he made man in his image. When God was finished making Adam, God said it is not good that man should be alone. Well, why? Because Adam could not actualize the relationality aspect of being a person, a, a single seed of intellect in a single being. So God created Eve. After he created Eve, at the end of Genesis 1, he said he created all things. Or Adam was now good. Let me know when we can resume, Darth, unless you want to talk. Yeah, to uh, yeah sorry, sorry about that. That, that guy was a uh, perennial troll. Darth, do you want to talk to someone else or do you want to continue this? No, you can continue. Okay. Um, so you said where our minds are discrete. Um, but the, the thing is with that, with that is like there's qualitative differences to speak of other than just being discrete. You know what I mean? Discrete means one thing is not the other. Yeah. Yeah, I think the mistake that you're making is you're trying to have more understanding uh, of the Trinity than what has been given. Okay. okay. The point is, if you... Um, I, I might recommend that you might want to read Robert Moray's book about the Doctrine of Trinity. It's a little bit of heavy lifting, but that's worthy of reading. There are other books on the Trinity. There's even a, another good one, but it's might be a little bit too difficult or, well, maybe not too difficult, but you'd have to have a, a prior interest in biblical presuppositional apologetics. It's called the Trinity and the, uh, uh, by Bosserman. Yeah, he gives a biblical presuppositional defense of the doctrine of Trinity. But all we need to know is that the God who is has revealed that he's one God who within the unity of his being subsists as three co-equal but distinct persons or seats of intellect. Do you see where I'm coming from with my misunderstanding. Oh, do you? I don't. I don't see what the problem is. Well, the problem is the use of the word "discrete" without without any other qualitative difference. Discrete means that something is distinct from something else in some way. Yeah, but we don't know any of the ways. You don't have to. But then, how do you know it's discrete? Because we have been, God has revealed it to us. So, are you just saying we're not the, privy? The, 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 mis the mistake that you're making is analogous to what happened in the Garden of Eden. You are attempting to understand to the point of acceptance the doctrine of the Trinity based upon the notion of autonomous reasoning rather than on the supremacy and the autonomous reason of God and how he reveals it. You are not satisfied with how and why God has revealed his nature. You 
want more than what has been given. Okay. I am not the least bit uncomfortable or dissatisfied with what I don't understand or don't know insofar as I'm limited by God's revelation. Okay. I'm not troubled by that at all. I am not troubled in the least of how my non-material essence can be interoperable with, with my physicality. And that after my body dies, my soulish existence, my spirit will continue in conscious existence until that time when I will be rejoined with my resurrected body. I don't understand how that works. Okay. Hmm. Let me think. If God had wanted to give us more information, then he wouldn't, but he chose not to. Maybe if you become a born-again believer and you repent toward God, realizing that you are a hell-bound sinner and you need to turn to Christ as Savior, and then when you and I die, we will be forever learning about the magnitude and greatness of God. Maybe God is re reserving for us um, further clarification and enlightenment for the rest of eternity. Maybe it's the case if God had given us more information about himself to those who operated off of autonomous reasoning, right, that it would be further unpal unpalatable to them. Look at how the revelation of God of himself and about himself is unpalatable to the human race, with few exceptions. What God has revealed, much of humanity has rejected and then concocted a world out of their own imagination. And you're troubled about not understanding the Trinity? I don't understand. I don't understand the intricacies of how God created the world in six days. I don't. I don't care what I, about what I don't understand. All I know is God has revealed it, and since I hold to the supremacy of the mind of God versus the supremacy of the mind of man, which is not defensible or, or coherent, I accept what the supreme mind has revealed. That's true. Now, if God permits me through rigorous studying the Bible and benefiting from those who study the Bible to understand certain implications that you will get from rigorously studying the Bible, fine. Or, for example, um, like the Bible doesn't go into specificity as to the nature of time. Okay, so we might endeavor on a research project to try to philosophically unpack the different views of time and which one would best fit and be the most defensible and coherent um, to understand how God relates to time. That's fine. But when it comes to the nature of God, God has only given us a limited amount of information. Okay. I think I'm understanding. Um, so you're saying we don't have enough information to, to tell someone how they are discreet, right? Yeah. Discreet means something is not the other. Length is discrete from width. Yeah. Can you please explain to me that, that discreteness? Yeah, it just means that it's it's not the other. Well, okay. do you? But you. But like, do you see the the difference? Look, like, do you, you see the difference between that there are different discrete cores within a single yes. CPU? Yes. 
Now, the difference is that's an, that's an analogy because each of the CPUs are discrete in terms of space, spa, temporal spatial locations. Okay. Now, each of the persons are discrete in some way and in some sense. And we can only, in attempting to recapitulate it, sometimes appeal to analogies. Analogies don't prove. What proves it is that God has revealed it. Okay? Yes. And proof is not the same thing as persuasion. Uh, I guess... Um... Like when you say that length and width are discrete, I accept that because like there are qualitative differences to speak of. And that's that's why it's not analogous, I don't think. Did you ever did you ever hear of the movie the you know who Steve Martin was? No, I'm young. Oh, okay. He's a he's a famous comedian, movie star, and he did a comedy called The Man with Two Brains. And something went wrong, and the consciousness of one person went and resided in another. Where within the one body, there existed two consciousness. And there's a bat, a com it's called a man with two brains. It's a comedy. The point is, is you probably are reluctant to accept it because you don't understand it. Well, there's a whole hell of a lot of stuff out there that you don't understand that you accept. So what that you don't understand it? There's, there are so many things that you and I accept that we don't understand it, but we accept it on the authority of those who represent themselves as understanding it to a vastly greater degree than we do. Because the, the problem is, is what I'm getting, is when you're speaking about the differences, the discreteness. Well, look, let me explain something to you. I was training somebody to use a piece of equipment many years ago. And I told them to put their hand on something that was spinning at many revolutions per second, Okay and then to start gently squeezing on it. And they were fearful and they wouldn't do it because they thought they were gonna get burned and they thought it was in some way gonna you know, break their wrist or whatever. And I said, no, I said, watch me, right? And because I had been trained in how to do it, right? I showed them what I wanted them to do and how if they, they followed what I said, they could stop the device, okay? Right? They didn't understand it, so they wouldn't accept that it was safe to do what I was telling them to do. Once they saw it in action, then they realized, they realized oh, I can do that too. What, the mistake that you're trying to do is that unless you can understand it to your satisfaction, you're not going to accept it. Well, that's the very thing that Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden. That they were only going to accept God's declaration that they would die if they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil only by virtue of their cognitive operation and their, their induction or experience. The fatal flaw was that the mind of God being supreme had spoken. Okay. They rejected that because they they wanted to know that something was true by their own cognition and experience. But by that standard, you couldn't know anything. Because in a biblical model, we can only know what God has created and revealed. So, for example, if I come to know that there is the moon 
orbits the earth. I can only know that because it's a creative revelatory of act, act by God. I can only know that I'm a self-conscious being because that too is a creative and revelatory act. So everything that I genuinely know is first and foremost a revelation of God. Whether or not somebody wants to characterize or typify that as a revelation of God. Okay? Now, why should we expect to understand the further intricacies of the nature of God, the Trinity, about how each person is discrete from the other, but they're concretely unified? Why should I expect to understand it in any greater depth that I'm not given further explanation? It, it, I, I just don't understand what your hang-up is. Um, okay. So I agree that um, something can be true without understanding it. I definitely agree with that. Um, but what was the example you gave uh, where you were working and you knew what you were doing? I forget. Can you go over that again? It was it was a piece of equipment with something. I don't want to go into too much detail because I don't like to reveal uh, too much information. But it's a piece of equipment that spun at a certain amount of revolutions per minute, and that you could put your hand on it and slow it down. And because I was experienced and I had greater understanding of this. I knew that what I was instructing the person was safe to do, and they were just, they were fearful. You know, they thought they were going to get their hand ripped off or their whatever, which it's understandable. I said, no, I said, you're not, I said, nothing bad's going to happen. Okay. Yeah, I said, you're not going to get burned. You know, I just, I said, just, just put your hand on it and start gently squeezing it and then you'll stop the operation of it. And then once they once they saw me in operation doing it, then like, oh, okay. Now it's understandable that when somebody is new to something and they're afraid they're going to get injured by something, I, I wouldn't know if I wouldn't want to do it either. Right? I'm just using that as an analogy. I'm not troubled by what I don't understand about God. Unless, of course, God has seen fit that, that although some things that may not be specified in, in within uh, the Bible, that God may permit us through a rigorous introspection and cognitive exercises to try to understand. Okay? Like, for example, uh, is God timeless or is it God some way temporal? That's a philosophical question. The Bible doesn't, the Bible speaks of God being eternal, but the Bible doesn't say that God himself is timeless. So there have been some people who say, well, God is timeless. And then people say, no, God is in some way temporal. Okay. So the Bible doesn't, hasn't really gone into specificity. So, um, you know, we, we, we have the prerogative to rack our, our minds to try to come up with a, a, a solution. That's fine. But the Trinity is not one of those things. Okay. We need to be satisfied that certain things at this juncture of God's plan of redemption, that there's mystery. Okay. Okay. I understand what you're saying now. Okay. This makes a lot more sense. So basically in the analogy with the equipment or whatever, you're like god is like the intel is the uh credible source just like you're the credible source for the uh guy that wasn't was scared to use the equipment right god, the, the, okay so what we have okay so what we have here okay when i say the mind of god i also i just don't mean the intellect of god i mean the being of god as well okay so the mind of god in the biblical worldview is ultimate okay so to be ultimate means to exist um, without any peer. It means to be supreme. Okay? So the mind of God, the being of God, the intellect of God, 
is supreme. It is ultimate. So when God reveals something, it is beyond dispute. It cannot be rationally disputed. Okay? Okay. Now, if God reveals something, but he permits us by study in one part of scripture and he and we and we 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 do a, a systematic study of of the scripture, then we can say, okay, here's how one part of scripture clarifies another. Or if we go through certain cognitive processes in philosophy, because sometimes God has allowed us through rigorous cognitive inspection of our own thinking to figure certain things out. Okay. That's fine. But the Trinity goes to the core of, of God's being. And you're not going to be able through just, you know, purely cognitive exercises, philosophically going to be able to figure this out. I'm not troubled by it. Okay, I understand where you're coming from. Okay, then here's my only... But, but here's the problem. If somebody does not accept God's self-disclosure of his nature, right? Then why aren't they troubled with the fact that when they don't accept that, it will be by virtue of that they're adopting the supremacy of human cognition. Hi there. Ah, hold on a second. So there, to not accept the revelation of God on any particular matter is to embrace the notion of the supremacy of the human mind and reason. But they're not troubled in the least that the supremacy of the human mind cannot be established. Such a notion is indefensible and incoherent. But they're not troubled about that. Okay. Because right. they're operating off of a false belief. Wait, so one more thing. I just want to... No! Watch just one more, and then I'll be done. Uh, um, a stoic, if you want to participate, that's fine. But if you're going to heckle, you will get server muted. Um, okay, so then if someone asks you uh, what the qualitative differences are between the three, uh, uh, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit... Your answer should be, God hasn't revealed that part to us yet, or He qualitative. The only they're, qualitatively, they share the same attributes, other than the fact that they're discrete from one another. Okay. Wait, hold on. Um, Hi. Look, let me let, let me give you an analogy. Okay. Have you ever seen an interview with identical twins? Uh, that were so similar, not only in the way they appeared, but in the way they conducted themselves, but in the way they thought, that it was uncanny? Yeah. Okay. So imagine that we, we have this situation, um, and just forget for the, for the sake of the argument or the analogy, that their, their discreteness is temporal, spatially, uh, in terms of location. But they're still discrete, yet they share the same qualitativeness. Uh -huh. the, the, the biggest hurdle that you have to overcome is that there are certain things at this juncture are a mystery to us. And God has chosen not to go into further specificity in his revelation of himself. And you have to be satisfied with that. Okay, And this idea is saying, no, I will not accept until my intellect has been satisfied, okay, that is the very sin that Adam and Eve committed in the Garden of Eden. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Darth, I think what um, Sorrow's issue might be is that like with the the identical twins analogy 
you could say they share a lot of the same qualitative properties yet they are distinct in the sense that they have two distinct wills two distinct minds and that's what makes them two distinct humans so how is that not i, I think sorrow might be asking how is that not also the no case sorrow for... finished his questions well oh, I, was wait, saying, hang on. I was saying they're identical twins they're there's qualitative differences to speak of they're not qualitatively the same Right, in the main, yeah, but the well, main. It's an, ana it's an analogy. Two the, point, wills. the point is this: the point is this. God has made Himself very clear, okay, in the Scriptures. He is one unified being from eternity, one being. Within that being, there is a threefold distinction of seats of intellect that we call persons. You don't have to understand it. Okay. okay. All right. I if, 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 if you're going if you're going to go by that principle, then you're going to have to abandon your own position because number one, you're not accepting what emanates from the the supremacy of the mind of God. True. You're, the, you're then operating off of the false belief in the supremacy of the human mind. The supremacy of the human mind cannot be rationally and logically accounted for. Sure. Period. But the person who rejects the revelation of God is operating off of that false belief, which, according to their own criterion, could never be satisfied by a cognitive investigation. Yes. So their position, when they reject what God has clearly revealed, regardless of the content of, what they, uh, of the revelation, such a position is hopelessly incoherent. Yeah, he was an obvious troll. Um, Darth, I, I do have a question. On, on your view of the, the Trinity, do you, and if you don't have an answer, that's fine, but do you that there are like three wills in the Trinity or just one singular will? Um, we should use the figure of speech. They are of one mind. Okay. Even though they, they, their seats of intellect are discrete from each other. They share the same purpose, the same will, common will. Okay. Uh, Darth, okay. you know, I just I just saw a video. Do you ever see that those those the Siamese or conjoined twins or the young young ladies? They have one body. They have two heads. You ever seen them? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and I was watching. They're driving a car, and one of them can control the right arm, and the other can, you know, they control different body parts. And yet they have they they have two driver's licenses, okay. <laughs> and it's kind of freak freaky when you when you when you see it, you know. But they're happy, and they're of one mind when they're driving the car. Okay, their minds are discreet, but they're one body, even though they have two heads. Okay, and they operate their mind in unison. Okay, they're 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 of one mind even though they're two discrete minds. Wow. So the Bible has revealed that God is one quantitatively, but within the unity, there is a, a, a threefold distinction of, of, of intellect that he's revealed as the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. Now, the point is this. It will not be possible on the grounds of logic to reject it. People think they do because they think that whatever their cognitive gymnastics are, that constitutes logic. Well, no, it doesn't. Because the seat of logic will be the supremacy of the mind of God. Okay? Not the supremacy of the mind of man. So, like I said... 
those who reject what God has revealed about himself, his Trinitarian nature, are doing so off of the principle of the supremacy and autonomy of the mind of man, which cannot be rationally and logically defended. So they're operating off of a principle not only that is indefensible, it's, it's, an, it's, it's irrational on their own terms, but they don't care. You see, that's the nature of rebellious man. Rebellious man doesn't care what God has revealed. Rebellious man just wants to believe what he wants to believe. Wait, so do you view the minds as the si like the Siamese twins? The stun is a discrete seat of intellect from the father. Okay, they are discrete in some way and in some sense, but they are unified as one being, inseparable. Okay, from eternity. Look, I understand. once you understand, listen, listen, so in philosophy, one of the ultimate questions in philosophy is, what is the fundamental nature of everything? Is it in its oneness or its manyness? Okay. Which is ultimate? Okay. It's called the one and the many problem or which takes priority? Well, we can say that this problem is solved in the triune God of the Bible. That what is ultimate and fundamental is the unity, the oneness of God. Okay? And that the world, being many, emanates from the oneness of God. So, God is the grand unifier of the many. So you have God and the world. So in God, we have unity and diversity, and this constitutes coherence within the being of God. God then creates a world, uh, 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 one world, where there is a plurality of things, and there are various levels of unity among the diversity of things. So we have oneness and we, we have manyness, which results in intelligibility. If one rejects the notion that God is the one and the many, that his oneness and his manyness are equally ultimate, one does not take priority over another. If you reject that, then you're going to have to reject the notion that unity and diversity um, must exist in order for there to be coherence. Okay. Look, I, you know, even, even when I was a child, you know, going to church, there's certain things about God that I didn't quite understand. But I knew then, I said to myself, well, who cares if I don't understand it? Certain things about God. I, I would say to myself, well, what if it's the case that I could never understand certain aspects about God? Why would that mean that it would be illogical? Or I also thought, well, maybe I don't understand now, but one day given enough time and investigation for in the afterlife, I will understand. I'm not troubled by what I don't understand. Okay. The only things I'm troubled about what I don't understand are some things that I know that I can understand it. And there's something that's hindering me from understanding it. Right. But if it's beyond my, my human ability to understand something, I'm not troubled by that. It doesn't bother me. Yeah, here's my problem, though. 
when someone when someone asks you how are the the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit different, I think you should be saying I don't know how they're different, but God says they're different. No, God says God says they're discreet from each other. But you don't know how they're discreet, other than they're not the same person. They're not the same persons. They're not the same seed of intellect. You see, you on the other hand, you know that one person is not another. You know they're discreet because of temporal spatial location. Okay? You see, you want more information that's been given. I think you have the attitude, unless I'm mistaken, which I could be, or other people have the attitude is, well, unless I can understand it, I'm not going to accept it. Well, 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 then you can kiss your own reasoning goodbye because you cannot possibly have a coherent defense and understanding of your capacity to be and to reason in a world that is disassociated from the supremacy of the mind of God. Okay. Well, I'm a Christian myself. So on your, well, I'm just telling you that there are many passages that says, for example, in, in Scripture, it says the secret things belong unto the Lord. There are certain things that he has granted us to know now and other things he has not granted us to know now. But there will be things that we don't know now that when after we die, we go to be with the Lord. We will spend the rest of eternity learning about God. We will, we will never see. That's the great thing. We will never get bored, ever. We will always be learning about the greatness of God, and that can never end for us. Okay. You know, there are scientists out there, to give you an analogy, who are baffled by some weird stuff that goes on at a quantum level. They shrug their shoulders. Okay, so I don't understand it. Okay. Did you know? Did you know that sometimes well, that... light operates like a, a a particle, and other times it operates like a wave? It's some There's... weird stuff. Th that attitude would be true for everything in our world because. We don't understand anything exhaustively. I don't understand my microwave exhaustively, and I, I'm not troubled by that. Yeah, well, there are a lot. Nobody can understand it. Even the person who designed the microwave oven can't understand it exhaustively. There are levels of understanding. Okay. But that, that's not my yeah. that's not my point, though. My point is, I Look, agree. God, listen, listen. It's it's very simple. God has revealed that He's one being, and that within His being. There's a threefold distinction. Yeah, I agree with that. It's, it, it's not, it's, 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 this is not. This is not complicated. Well, Darth, my problem is your conduct with how you approach, you approach it, because we we don't as Christians we don't know the difference other than that they're different. The three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah, the Father makes it clear that He and the the Son are both unified and separate. Yeah. They take they are unified, in consideration. Right. So they are unified in in some way, but they are they are not unified in another way. So what? Okay? It's not a contradiction. Well, the the problem is is when you say things like they're discreet, like and it's revealed to you that they're discreet. If you don't know how they're discreet, uh, like the qualitative differences, then it feels like empty words. Uh, no. Because because the reason why it feels empty to you is because you're operating off of autonomous reasoning, which is a sin. Did Adam and Eve understand why eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? When Adam and Eve uh, ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, was there something intrinsically about the tree that effectuated death? Or was there something extraneous to the tree of life that effectuated death? Extraneous. Yeah. 
Was there something intrinsic to the tree, or there was something extraneous that uh, death came upon them when they ate of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Which was? Which is it? Extraneous. It was it. Or intrinsic. Well, which is it? Uh, wait, I don't understand. Can you go more in depth? Was, did they become subject to death because there was something intrinsic about the qualitativeness of the tree of the knowledge of evil that death came upon them? Okay. Or was it something extrinsic that came upon them consequently when they ate the, the, the tree that there was there's nothing there was no intrinsic quality within the tree that brought about death so oh. which is it was it intrinsic or extrinsic oh it was extrinsic how do you know that um well, told me. i guess i'm guessing at some yeah you don't know do you and neither do i Neither does anybody else. God didn't specify. 